Hello, fourth grade, and welcome to lesson 7-2. Today, we're going to work some more on factors. So for 7-1, we talked about factor pairs. This lesson, we're going to continue working with factors. Let's go ahead and watch our short video lesson, and then we'll get into our notes and guided practice. And I did attach some links to some extra videos to help you with factors in Google Classroom. Please do watch those. They are really helpful. How can you use multiplication to find the factors of a number? Think about this question during the lesson. Jean wants to arrange her action figures in equal size groups. What are all the ways Jean can arrange her action figures? Jean can think of all the factor pairs of 16. Factor pairs are two numbers that, when multiplied, give you a certain product. For example, 2 and 8 are a factor pair of 16, because 2 times 8 is equal to 16. Jean can arrange one group of 16 figures, or 16 groups of one figure. So 1 and 16 are factors of 16. Why are 1 and 16 factors of 16? One and sixteen are factors of sixteen because one times sixteen equals sixteen, and sixteen times one equals sixteen. Jean can arrange eight groups of two figures or two groups of eight figures. Eight times two equals sixteen. Two times eight equals sixteen. So two and eight are factors of sixteen. Jean can also arrange four groups of four figures. Four is a factor of 16. Four times four equals 16. So the factor pairs for 16 are 1 and 16, 2 and 8, and 4 and 4. That's a lot of ways for Jean to arrange her action figures. A whole number is a multiple of each of its factors. 16 is a multiple of 1. 2, 4, 8, and 16. How can you be sure you found all the factors of 16? Try 1, 2, 3, and so on until you get to a factor you already found. For example, 1 and 2 are factors of 16. 3 is not. 4 is a factor. 5, 6, and 7 are not. 8 is a factor, but it is in a pair with 2, so it was already found. So 1, 16, 2, 8, and 4 are all the factors of 16. Now you know how to use multiplication to find the factors of a number. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our notes and our short video, or sorry, our notes and our guided practice for this lesson. And I'm also going to show you guys another short video uh, that is in Google Classroom that will be helpful for you guys to help you figure out factors. So let's go over our notes first. Now for our notes, we have our title, the top 7-2 factors. And what we're thinking about in this lesson is how can you use multiplication to find the factors of a number? Now remember, factors are numbers that can be multiplied to find a product that you're looking for. So how do you find the factors of a number? Well, you're going to start with the number one and then number two and so on and see if you could do one times that number. One times anything will also will always be a factor. If it's an even number, you can divide it by two, then see if you can divide it by three and four and so on. So if I ask you to find all of the factors of the number 20, what you need to think about first is what multiplication facts do I know that have a product of 20? And then you can start making a list. 
So I know one times 20 will give me 20. Two times 10 will give me 20. Three doesn't work, so I didn't use three. Four times five gives me 20. And then if I keep going five times four, 10 times two, and 20 times one. Now you can see the numbers are repeating after a while. When the numbers are repeating or start repeating, then you know you've already found all, you, all of your factors. And what you're going to do is you're going to put those numbers in order. So the factors of 20 are 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, and 20. And the reason they're arranged this way is uh, there is called rainbow factors. So what you're doing is the 1 times the 20 will give you 20. 2 times 10 will give you 20. 4 times 5 will give you 20. So you're you're pairing them from the outside and moving in. Now let's take a look at another example and find all of the factors of 24. So how can I make 24 using multiplication? So I made my list over here. I started with my numbers, one, two, three, and so on. And I started to list them to figure out which numbers I could use. So we already know we can do one times 24. So we started with that because that one's easy for us to work with. I can do one times 24 will give me 24. Since 24 is an even number, I could also use two. So two times 12 gave me 24. 24 can be divided by three. So three times eight gives me 24. 24 can also div be divided by four or four times something will give me 24. So four times six is 24. I can't use five because 24 doesn't end with a five or a zero like all the other multiples of five. Six we already used over here. So I can see that once my numbers start repeating, then I know I've already found all of my factors. So I use the six over here. Next we get to eight. I already used the eight over here. So my factors are going to be, for 24, are going to be one, two, three, four, six, eight, 12, and 24. And just to show you that rainbow pattern that I was talking about. So we have one and 24, two and 12, three and eight, and then four and six. So it's not the neatest looking rainbow right now, but you can see that those numbers are connecting from the outside in. Okay, so let's take a look at another example and find the factors of 12. So again, we're going to list our numbers. What you can do is you can list all of your numbers out until 12. Uh, but again, as soon as your factors start repeating, then you already know you've found them all. So I can always use 1, 1 times 12 or 12 times 1. Since 12 is an even number, I know I can use 2, 2 times 6 or 6 times 2. Oops. I can use 3, 3 times 4 or 4 times 3. I can't use 5, then I get to 6, and I've already used 6 in this factor pair. I can't use 7, 8, 9, 10, or 11. None of those will make 24. And then 12, we know 1 and 12, uh, 1 and 12 will equal 12. Sorry, 4 times 3 is equal to 12. 2 times 6 is equal to 12. And 1 times 12. So again, if we're going to look at these and we're going to connect these factor pairs, so 1 times 12, 2 and 6, and then 3 and 4, those are all my factor pairs for the number 12, my factors are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12 here. All right, next, let's go ahead on to our guided practice. Now, your first guided practice question says, Jean has 16 action figures. She buys seven more action figures. What are the different ways, the different equal size groups that Jean can make now? So first, our first hidden question that we have to answer here is, well, how many does she have all together now? So we knew she had 16 and then she bought seven more. So that puts her at 23 action figures. So now stop and think, how can I make equal groups totaling 23? Well, I know I can do one and 23 and 23 and one, but there's no other way that I can make 23. So Jean can arrange them with one group of 23 or 23 groups of one. Those are the only two ways that she can arrange them if she has 23 action figures. For number two, what factor besides one does every even number have? So when you're thinking about even numbers, like we've talked about before, even numbers can always be divided equally into two groups. So two is always going to be a factor for every even number because all even numbers can be shared equally into two groups. So remember, when we're talking about even numbers, all of your even numbers will end 
So the ones place will have either a zero, two, four, six, or eight in it. Now for the rest of your guided practice, it says write the factor of each number. So for the number two, I can only make two doing one times two or two times one. So one and two are the only factors here because two is such a small number. The factors for 20, I have to stop and think, how can I make 20? So I can make one, 20 by doing one times 20. I could do two times 10 or four times five. And again, you can use a commutative property to reverse these numbers, but then you'll see that your factors are one, two, four, five, 10, and 20. Your factor pairs for 28 are going to be one times 28, two times 14 or four times seven. So when you're listing them, you list them in order, one, two, four, seven, 14, 28. So one times 28 or 28 times one, two times 14 or 14 times two, four times seven or seven times four. Those will all give you 28. And the last one they ask you for the factors of 54. So I listed all the different ways I was able to make 54. One times 54, two times 27, three times 18 or six times nine. I listed those in order. One, two, three, six, nine, 18, 27, and then 54. So there's my one, two, three, six, there's a nine, 18, 27, and 54. So when you're working with factors, remember factors are all of the numbers that you multiply by each other to get a particular product. And it has to be whole numbers. So you don't want any remainders. You don't want anything that's left over. What you want to focus on are ones that will equally go into that or equally make that number. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you one more time and share a video on factors and how to find factors. And this is listed right here in Google Classroom. What up everybody, Instructor Beats back again. Today we are talking about factors. Let's dive right in. The objective today, today I will be able to find the factors of a number that is from one to 100. So the first thing we need to do is figure out, okay, well, what is a factor? So here I have a blank multiplication equation, right? And the factor actually are, the factors are numbers that we multiply together. So these two numbers, no matter what they are, we're gonna call them a factor. And then of course the answer to a multiplication uh, problem is going to be called our product. So two factors multiplied together are going to give you a product. Now you could have three factors, but factors are just numbers that you multiply together. So an example might be, right, um, 10 times 9 equals 90. So a factor of 90 could be 10 and a factor of 90 could be 9. So now that we kind of understand what a factor is, let's think about what is our missing factor? So what factor could I multiply by five to get 10? Obviously the answer is two. So the statement you could say is that two is a factor of 10 and five is a factor of 10. Now for our product six, if one of our factors is two, what does our other factor have to be? Two times what equals six? And obviously the answer is three. So when we're talking about factors, we're talking about the numbers that you're multiplying together. They're gonna give you a product. So the question that you see a lot is, what are the factors of blank, right? What are the factors of seven? What are the factors of eight in this case? And so the way that we write this is we're gonna write our factors of eight in a factor rainbow. So the first thing we need to think about, right, is what, are, what is a factor, right? So a factor is what numbers can I multiply together, that should be a time sign, to give me eight. All right, and so obviously the easiest one is always one times eight, right? And I know that eight times one is the same thing, commutative property, but the digits are the same, one and eight. I know because this is eight, it's kind of a basic fact, I know two times four or four times two, right? And then I can't do anything by three, I can't multiply anything by, um, I already have four, I can't do five or six, right? So I, I have four factors for this number. I have one, eight, two, and four. 
And the way you'll see this written a lot of times is you'll see it in what's called a factor rainbow, hence the theme of rainbows for this uh, lesson. And so you'll be kind of connecting them like this. And really what this line is saying is that you can do one times eight or eight times one. And then you'll have two times four or four times two, right? And so my factors of eight are one, two, four, and eight. But the question then becomes, what if it's a number not like eight? What if it's not an easy number to think of the factors because I know my basic facts? What if it's a number like 23 or 32 or 97? What is a strategy I can use then to find all of the factors of that number without having to memorize crazy multiplication facts? Let's look at some a few steps. Steps for finding factors the instructor beat way. The first thing you're going to do, okay, is you're going to round your product up, the product being the number that you are trying to find the factors of. You're going to round it up, okay, to the nearest multiple of 10, right? What that means is you want to have a zero for your last digit. Now, these steps might be a little bit confusing when you just read them, but go ahead, um, stick with me. I'll show you an example, and I think all will become clear in time. After you find, round that number up to the nearest multiple of 10, you want to find half of that number and then make a list from 1 to that number. So, for example, half of 10, if I was, let's say I want to find the factors of 10, right? Half of 10 would be 5. So I'm going to say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? I'm making a list. And then we want to add the actual number to the end of this list. So if I'm trying to find the factors of 10, my last number would obviously be 10. And then I'm going to go through each number on the list to see if it's a factor. So let me give you an example of this. Um, go ahead and pause the video. Write down these steps if you need to. But we'll go through them. And I think even though they're a little wordy, it'll make a lot more sense when you see an example. What are the factors of 34? Okay, so my first step was to round 34, the product I'm trying to find the factors to, up to the nearest multiple of 10, which for 34 would be 40. Now, now that I have an easy multiple of 10, I can think to myself, okay, the second question or second step, what is half of 40? The answer to that would be 20. So I'm going to make a list 1 to 20, okay? And yes, this is a little bit of time consuming, but this is a great strategy to use if you're not really solid on your basic facts or if you're kind of struggling with this concept. Eventually, you can get away from making this, but this is a great strategy to start with, okay? So I'm going to make a list 1 to 20 because 20 is half of 40. And then I'm going to, I'm done with 40 now, I'm going to add my number to the end of it. So the product I'm trying to find is 34, right? So I'm going to add 34 to the end of this. Now I want to go through the list and I want to skip count by each number to see if it could be a factor of 34. So my first one is really easy. I always know that 1 times the number itself is going to be a factor. Now, this is an even number, 34, so I know that 2 is going to work. So I need to figure out what times 2 equals 34. What is the other factor pair for 2 that's going to give me 34, right? So I'm going to start with an easy one. I know 2 times 10 would be 20, So which if, if I'm not sure of my basic facts, I can just skip count from here. So 2 times 10 is 20. 2 times 11 would be 22. 2 times 12 would be 24. 2 times 13 would be 26, 2 times 14 would be 28, 2 times 15 would be 30, 2 times 16 would be 32, 2 times 17 would be 34. So 2 and 17 are a factor pair. They go together to make the product 34. Now, I'm going to start at 3. I'm going to go straight to 3 times 10 because that's 30. Okay, 30, 3 times 11 would be 33 then, 3 times 12 would be 36. So 3 does not work. 4, okay, so I can't start 4 times 10 because that's already too big. Um, I could do 4 times 8, right? 4 times 8 is 32. If you have to, you can start all the way at 0, but use your basic facts to help you. Um, matter of fact, let's just start with 4 times 5. Uh, so 4 times 5 is 20. 4 times 6 would be 24. 4 times 7 would be 28. 4 times 8 would be 32. 4 times 9 would be 36. So five or 4 does not work. 5 doesn't work because this number doesn't end in a 0 or 5, right? Some divisibility rules for you guys. 6, so I know 6 times 5 is 30. 6 times 6 would be 36. So 6 does not work either. 
7. 7 times uh, 5 is 35, so I know that doesn't work. 8, I know 8 times 4 is 32, which means 8 times 5 would be uh, four, uh, 40, sorry. So that doesn't work. And now I know 9 doesn't work, 10 doesn't work, 11, 22, 33, 30, or 44, that number doesn't work, 12, 24, 36, that number doesn't work, 13 plus 13 would be 26, plus another 13 would be 39, that doesn't work. And now I know the rest of them don't work because if 14 times any of these numbers would have worked, I would have already circled it. So 14 doesn't work, 15 doesn't work, 16, 19, and 20. So your factor rainbow for this is 1, 2, 17, and 34, and then you can connect these. So 34 has four different factors. So again, my steps I used, I rounded 34 up to the closest multiple of 10. I found out half of that was 20. I made a list of numbers so I could either circle them or cross them out. I added 34 to the end of it, right? Because 1 times 34 obviously are factors of 34. And then I just skip counted by each of these using my basic facts to help me to figure out if any of the other ones had a factor pair. Two numbers you multiply together to get my number. I found that 1 times 34 and 2 times 17 both worked. Hopefully this has helped you out a little bit. Um, please check out our other songs and videos at Instructed Beats Official. You can. All right, that takes you to the end of this extra supplemental video. If you guys have any questions, let me know fourth grade. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next lesson. Have a great day. Bye-bye.